Buongiorno, good morning all of you and welcome to this Caritas Internationalis Conference on Caritas work and humanitarian situation in Ukraine. Uh, before starting, I would like to thank and give in the floor to Mrs. Alba Kepi with the, with the board of the Italian Foreign Press Association, which is welcoming us today. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Alba Kepi, a member of the Board of Direction of Foreign Press Associations. I bring in greetings on behalf of our president, Esma uh, Chakur. She apologizes for not being present due to work reasons. And thank you for choosing uh, our venue to present of the uh, important result of your work. Uh, it was a dramatic year for Ukraine and for the rest of the world. Uh, I think solidarity is value for our coexistence and a mission in difficult times like uh, war. Solidarity is a mission. Solidarity unites us. So many innocent victims and so many people in need of help. Children of fainted and people without food and shelter. I think your work is sublime. I thank you, everyone, for your work. Good uh, job. Thank you very much for welcoming our conference uh, today. So one year of war in Ukraine and one year of work of the Caritas Confederation that helped people uh, in Ukraine and also in all the neighboring countries where thousands of refugees found refuge. Uh, we will uh, start with, uh, with a presentation of the number of an introduction by Caritas Internationalis Co-Temporary Administration, Mrs. Maria Amparo Alonso Escobar. Thank you, Marta, and thanks to all of you for being here with us today. Um, I would like, first of all, to, to um, acknowledge uh, the visit of Caritas Ukraine and Caritas Space uh, Ukraine with us, that along with um, Caritas in neighboring countries, were in fact before the 24th of February present in the country, continue to work tirelessly to support the vulnerable communities in Ukraine whose lives have been devastated, and they will continue <clears throat> working tirelessly after this war is over. Because Caritas, as this global confederation of 162 members, is always before, during, and after any conflict in the war. Which was our role as Caritas Confederation in the coordination of this response? Our Caritas strengthen is our widespread presence in the field and when a crisis, conflict, or war occurs, we set up a coordination, humanitarian coordination mechanism with the local Caritas as the main protagonist. This is important to reinforce. They are the protagonists, and they were the protagonists, and they will be the protagonists. In this case, due to the magnitude of the crisis, Caritas Internationalist Confederation set up a mechanism which was called Emergency Support Team. And for not only for Ukraine, but also supporting the Caritas in the neighboring countries. It was made possible also thanks to the sister organizations and Caritas Europe Regional Office, which I would like also to acknowledge and to recognize the work that they have done together again as uh, Caritas Ukraine and Caritas Spain as protagonists. And this coordination has been important not only in the country, but also coordinating efforts with other stakeholders in Ukraine and in neighboring countries. And the overview of the Caritas network response um, has been as Caritas Ukraine and Caritas Space Ukraine launching three emergency appeals. They will, they will explain uh, later on in detail. And other seven emergency appeals were launched in the neighboring countries, one in Moldova, two in Poland, two in Romania, one in Czech Republic, and one in Slovakia. Thanks to that, Caritas has pledged more than 100 million euros for humanitarian assistance in Ukraine and 35 million euro in neighboring countries. Thanks to that, 
5.3 beneficiaries were uh, serviced by Caritas uh, family. They will also explain the different sectors of intervention. And also note, noting that the number of services one by one has been higher. Just the, this, bringing the example of Caritas Poland also that they provided 15 million units of food and non-food items in Poland, for example. After this first year of the war, we hope is the last one, but this is the first year of the war, we would like, as Caritas Internationalis family, to acknowledge the solidarity of the entire world, the solidarity of the entire confederation, national members, dioceses, parishes in the world, as well as the work of the and private donors as well, who contributed a lot to this work, as well as acknowledging and recognizing the work of all the staff from both Caritases who are also suffering the consequences of this war. Thousands of volunteers, this help has been always important in, and especially in this, in this war. And despite this unprecedented level of support, more solidarity will be needed to continue with all projects, not only in Ukraine, but also in the neighboring countries until internal displaced people, refugees, are able to return back home in safety and dignity. Just to bring also some data from OCHA saying that 5.4 million are internal displaced people and more than 8 million refugees from Ukraine are recorded across Europe, plus 17.7 .7 million are in need of humanitarian assistance. Therefore, behind all those numbers, there are thousands and millions of life stories that will continue to need the solidarity from all of us. Visiting a Caritas Center, either in Ukraine or in neighboring countries, is really an example of what all round humanitarian assistance should be, but not only. Pope Francis said that Caritas is an essential part of the church and it, it institutionalizes love in the church. And it's an example when our emergency staff from Caritas Internationalis visited educational centers in Caritas, Romania. It was wonderful to see the refugee children in a kinder, in the kindergarten class set up in the center run by Ukrainian teachers who were themselves refugees in Romania. One of the teachers was helping the other kids who were following online classes of their school in Ukraine. It is when you realize that what Caritas gives is much more than assistance. Caritas does not just give a hot meal. We have the data provided, as I said, which is important, of course, a bed, a roof over one's head. This is absolutely important, but Caritas gives people humanity and dignity. And we want to continue this work. We want to bring that sense of hope, warmth, and humanity to the suffering in Ukraine. Thank you. Thank you very much. We, sorry, we have to use this microphone because we are also streaming this conference in order to uh, enable the entire Caritas Internationalist Confederation to participate. As you know, uh, Caritas is a confederation of 162 <coughs> member organizations operating in uh, 200 countries and territory. And uh, during this, uh, as uh, Mrs. Uh, Alonso uh, highlighted, during this uh, one year of war, the entire confederation was really close to our colleagues on the, on the field. And we will listen now from uh, their own voice uh, as these two uh, Caritas member organizations, Caritas PES Ukraine and Caritas Ukraine, uh, really give uh, hope and humanitarian assistance to the Ukrainian people. And uh, thanks to the grassroots presence, uh, widespread in the entire country, uh, we were one of the main actors of the humanitarian response in the country. So we will start now with uh, Father Vyacheslav Grinievi who is the Secretary General of Caritas Pass Ukraine. Okay. Thank you so much, Marta. Thank you so much for this invitation in this difficult time, but, but very important time because we still have needs 
we are still in dangerous situation, but it is important to share our experience and also to tell thank you for all confederation that you are with us in this uh, difficult moment. I remember very well that fierce days of the war because at the beginning we, uh, we had information that something can happen, um, the escalation can be, uh, and then we, we were in, in Odessa. We prepared our local teams um, with plan what we will do, uh, how it will look like if Russians will start aggression against us. And uh, then uh, it was 23 uh, February, but 24 February I wake up because my, my, my colleague called to me and said, Father, wake up because the war is started. And then um, when together with our staff, we, we came back, uh, coming back to Kyiv, in my mind, I was just just one question: God, why it's so so terrible experience in my uh, in my life? I, I will have, but also um, I understood that our life not will be the same as before. And I just prayed to God and uh, said, God, please give to me friends uh, that we will not be alone, because it was very very difficult to think about that you can be alone. And then I had many calls from our partners, from different Caritas, as, Father, please, let's go, we will support you. And it, it was, in, in first moment, it was not just about, about phones, about questions, about projects. It was just, please, we will support you to manage this, because we have experience, we have expert. And, and really, then, uh, all of us in Ukraine, we felt as one family. And for this familiarity, for this solidarity, Thank you, thank you so much. And uh, really, war is uh, now after one year. I can see, uh, I can see the the, the, the the effects of this support. Uh, we see uh, how many uh, people are supported by uh, by us. We we try to continue our support, but it is so difficult when you don't know how long this terrible situation will be. But we are, we are ready and we, we, we are motivated to continue our work. It is difficult because we are also as employees of uh, both Caritases. We are also victims of the war. We have our, our private stories, our private life, our families, and we are affected by the war. But uh, it is very important to know that we are not alone, that somebody is close to us. Um, we have many, uh, many different projects, and from the beginning, it depends on territory, because in the first days of the war, um, all Ukraine was bombarded. Uh, at that moment, was huge, huge, huge panic, because many people tried to be evacuated. So, um, and we, we started to support people with humanitarian aid, with packages humanitarian from different countries. Then we started emergency appeal. Uh, international uh, project where are many caritases that support uh, us in our activities then we saw that some in some parts we can organize centers for IDPs internal displaced persons and now we are working our network has more than 50 uh, centers uh, so we started to, to invite people, to evacuate people to the, uh, that centers uh, in safety, uh, that, that are in safety places. And then we organized hotline, so um, person can call asking about support in this or that uh, region. In, uh, they can receive information about our programs. Uh, in some safety region, safety, no, we don't have safety regions, but I mean, because we accepted uh, attacks to the city by Russian missiles as something normal, but it is not normal. And so I think that in normal okay. circumstances, we don't have safety places, but more safety than other. We started to realize that projects uh, with cash assistance, that person can receive uh, about $65 and can, uh, euros and can buy uh, that products that, that, that they need. We support it in winter time, also to, to prepare uh, houses, prepare uh, to, uh, to buy uh, uh, for, for winter time. We started projects uh, with reconstruction houses, so many, many different projects, and uh, but they are very important because uh, many times we see that images uh, of destroyed houses, 
schools, um, streets. But what is really um, very important to know that all of that distractions we have also in our hearts, in our families, in it is an image of our sto story, our society. And we as a Caritas, we, our vocation, because I think that it is not just, just work, it cannot be work, because we, we, don't, we, we are not limited by hours of work. It is vocation, it is service. And I think that our vocation is also to destroy uh, that human values, human dignity that is destroyed by the war totally. Uh, families, yes, because many families uh, are separated because women are in in in, in Europe, uh, men, uh, husbands, fathers are soldiers, and what will be after? How we can reunite them? When we speak about peace, my first point: we have to think about peace in family, in heart to unite family together, to unite in that experience with post-traumatic syndrome, with, with all of that experience of, of war. It is not easy, but I am sure that together in collaboration and solidarity, we can do this because it is our mission and we are a little bit martyrs of this situation. We have to continue our support. Thank you. Thank you for that you are with us. Thank you, Father Vyacheslav, and uh, was also very touching. We saw that yesterday you were received by the Holy Father, along with Caritas Internationalis, and you gave this beautiful gift of a cross made out of broken glasses of the buildings destroyed by, by the war. And uh, in this day, we were talking, and uh, also Father Biagioslav explained to me that this year is like one uh, uh, 365 station year, and, uh, uh, and that all of the Caritas sisters and private donors and whoever support, I like the Simon of Cyrene, that uh, help us in uh, helping the cross. And uh, well, later on, Father Biagioslav will be available for interview also in Italian and one uh, really significant initiative that Caritas Pest will have this week in order to mark this, uh, this tragic anniversary is to have one way of the cross on the 24th in the first uh, uh, Friday of Lent and this is one way of the cross called the, 30, uh, the 366 station just in order to uh, to symbolize what the Ukrainian people and also Car Caritas uh, people experienced during this uh, year. And all the, the texts of the station were written by the Caritas past staff. And uh, now, with uh, great pleasure, I'm going to give the floor to Mila Leonova, who is representing the other Caritas member organization. She is the responsible for external relations, and uh, we take the opportunity to thank uh, Tetiana Stavnici, the president of Caritas Ukraine, who cannot be uh, with us today, uh, but uh, is following us, and uh, we really thank her for uh, the tremendous work as we thank all the colleagues in Caritas Ukraine. Mila. Over to you. Yes, thank you so much, Marta. Uh, ciao. Uh, I'm Mila. I'm from uh, Ukraine and uh, I base it in Dnipro. I work for uh, national level, uh, but uh, I base it in Dnipro. If you follow the map, you can see that it's very close to the front line. And I ask, uh, I need to be here. Uh, because it's very important to be in the ground and to see what uh, people need in the front line. And uh, I'm just uh, want to be not like my voice, but a voice uh, uh, all of these people who I met and uh, who I hugs. <laughs> and uh, it's very important to share with you this energy because I'm not only Caritas. Uh, staff, but I'm mom of a five years old son. I'm a wife. I have my parents, and 
it's very important to, to know that Ukraine not only like country uh, in war, but uh, this is people in war. And uh, first of all, I want to thank you, uh, all world community, for this huge support, uh, what we have now. Uh, because with uh, all the package, with food, with uh, all the uh, plant of hot soup, uh, with uh, all the master class for children, with all psychological support, uh, we feel the great support, uh, with uh, your support, and feel that we are not alone. Uh, because uh, it's a really huge financial support, and uh, more than Two and uh, 2.4 million people uh, we uh, supported because uh, we have this financial support from uh, all of the world. And um, uh, it's uh, very important to understand uh, that we have uh, uh, this explosion, we have this rocket attack, but no one die because hunger and because cold. And that's very important for us. And uh, yes, of course, uh, 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 we have a huge humanitarian crisis, and it's continuous. And uh, as uh, Maria told, uh, now it's uh, almost uh, 18 million people in need. And uh, we try to help uh, these people, and uh, we have a really huge, uh, huge network in Ukraine, like Caritas. This is more than uh, 40 centers, and more than 40, uh, 440 uh, church hub. Uh, so uh, every city have uh, just hand, uh, like Caritas hand, and um, we support it in different way. Uh, you know, we uh, try not to uh, just give food for people, give some sleep place for people. Uh, we just uh, try to restore the people's dignity. Because all people who come to us uh, after this suffering, uh, after this, uh, uh, you know, just uh, what the people saw, uh, need to not only our financial support, but our hugs our warm words. And um, in my Dnipro, actually, I, uh, uh, I didn't move from my Dnipro uh, at the beginning, uh, because I had a strong desire, I had a strong voice in my soul uh, that I, I need to be here, I need to be in place uh, when I leave. <laughs> And uh, when, uh, you know, Caritas uh, work uh, so long time and we supported in Donbass area all these eight years and all people know about Caritas. And uh, when this war, uh, after 24 February, when this war started with a new, uh, like new wave, all these people from Donbass come to us, come to Dnipro and try to fund Caritas because they know in Donbass what a huge support was. And uh, 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 part of our team evacuated to Lviv, and just 10 people started to uh, this uh, support. And uh, it was crowd, it was more than 1,000 people near our office. And we tried to help all these people. <coughs> and uh, we just create the space uh, for the next steps, for the big emergency support for uh, what's there. Um, all of the world <laughs> support what we have now. And, um, uh, you know, uh, it's very important uh, not only give the hand to the adult, but to the children too. And it's a really huge area what we supported. We have more than 60, in, uh, in Ukraine, we have more than 60, like a, a safe children's space. Uh, when we can provide uh, psychological support, master class for children, and uh, uh, because uh, Ukrainian children have only, most of children have, uh, have only online education, it's very important to create the space when children, when kids, uh, just, just the kids, and uh, uh, it's, it's really warm for me uh, to see when uh, first uh, just children come to us and have this sadness and sad and uh, you know just uh, even uh, didn't, didn't smile 
And after our support, these people just, uh, these children have smile. And uh, it's, it's really tears because when you, when you live in this war, when you hear every time this red alarm, when you, you just, uh, when you hear this explosion every time, uh, you need to go to the uh, bathroom because uh, in the flat, this is the most safe place. And uh, so many people just, you know, uh, the bathroom uh, now is uh, like uh, the best place in the flat, but it's safety. And uh, um, through the children who come to us, we of course help the parents. Because when parents uh, wait for children, they just group and speak together. And this is like a safety place for these people to share all this pain, what uh, these people have in soul. And they share in, you know, uh, information um, how it was uh, in this occupation, maybe. How it uh, live in uh, this uh, war uh, with these war things because it's it's new for us and uh, um, how these people love uh, all this place uh, where these people born and uh, what uh, these people will do the first when the war the, the end and uh, uh, it's really pleasure to be part of this humanitarian support. Uh, because uh, when we give the food people, when we give the financial support, uh, we save us too. Uh, because uh, I can't imagine if uh, I will, uh, if I move, because it's uh, so hard to see the situation abroad, more hardest even. And uh, uh, in Caritas, we provided uh, more than four million services for people through this war uh, and uh, I told this is uh, 2.4 people a uh, million people and uh, we have a big networking it's uh, more than uh, two, uh, two, 2,300 people like a staff like employers and uh, 8,000 people volunteers and can imagine that 40 percent of these volunteers uh, this is refugees and uh, why? Uh, uh, because uh, first of all, these people come to us and uh, just uh, have this uh, support from us, and after want to contribute and share this uh, grateful and uh, uh, give support. And uh, this is really amazing when we are united, when we are, can be together, and uh, as I told, not alone, because. Uh, um, when we have this support from Caritas Internationalis, from all of the world, um, we are not alone, and it's really important for us. And um, uh, what uh, services we provide? Uh, we have different. So this is uh, uh, food kits, hygiene, this is hot meal, this is shelter, this is cash grants in different way, because, you know, uh, it, it was really, uh, we worried about this winter because uh, so many houses was destroyed and even now uh, so many people live uh, in basement because this residential house uh, can't be repaired right now. And uh, uh, we provide uh, uh, these cash grants for uh, restore the windows, uh, for small repairing, uh, for uh, warm clothes and uh, uh, that's what helped these people continue uh, and continue stand uh, in in country and uh, not to go to abroad. And uh, we are together. And uh, as uh, uh, we speak about, like uh, yes, now we we haven't a uh, safe place in Ukraine because we never know when uh, the next rocket attack will hit. Uh, even uh, last uh, uh, last uh, uh, days, I was in Kharkiv region. Uh, this is very close to Russia border, maybe uh, 20 kilometers. And uh, we visited uh, a village uh, where before war uh, was uh, 5,000 people. And uh, uh, this territory was occupied a long time. And after, uh, uh, now, after the occupation, 
and only 340 people live in this area. And only Caritas and some volunteers group come to these people and provide the support for these people. This is elder people uh, who can't to move and who want to be uh, part of this place even through this war. And uh, we need to help to these people uh, because uh, they're helpless with this. And when we give these people some food kits every time, uh, this uh, really huge support for these people. And um, um, we need to understand that, of course, we need to continue and continue this support because uh, we, uh, we know it's long term. We need not only survive, but we, we, we need to be prepared to repair our country after ruin. And uh, we, we need to be strong. So I want to share with you not only our pain, uh, but I want to share our energy. Uh, we are strong and uh, we are stand together with you. And um, we have really great component. <laughs> this is love. Because we love our family. Uh, we love our land. And we just want to uh, protect protect ourselves, our family, our land. And um, just, um, I want to ask you, uh, it's prayer, not only financial support, and prayer, it's a very fast way uh, to get the God. <laughs> so I ask you about pray too, uh, pray for peace in Ukraine, uh, because it's very important uh, for us uh, um, to end this war and to get the peace. I have a gift from you. <laughs> uh, this is flower, and uh, this is watermelon. Uh, have you ever heard about her song before the war? Maybe no. But war and uh, this occupation, this war, uh, and you know this place. And this is our watermelon, the best watermelon. <laughs> I will share with you. Uh, I hope maybe you have some land to plant this. And this is our flowers. This is special Ukrainian flowers. This is special sunflowers. And uh, plant, please plant this. Uh, like, uh, remember about us and pray for us. And uh, this uh, crisis, you know, energy crisis, um, uh, we become to use uh, just candles and uh, all family get together and uh, now it's not like we with phone but with candles and uh, we just uh, it's united us you know so um this war uh, yes of course we have so many loss we have so many scars we have so many uh, destru destruction but uh, um, we are not a victim in our soul. And this is very important thing, what I want to share with all the world. We are not a victim in our soul. And uh, I have a gift for Caritas International, a bit because this is a special gift. My, my mother-in-law uh, created this, made this uh, in February uh, 2022. Maybe before one week, and we're, we're starting. Um, and uh, she created this and uh, asked me, please make this uh, gift, because uh, I want uh, um, you, uh, when you will have the Christmas tree, you have this uh, girl, uh, skate, yes. And uh, um, because we want uh, to celebrate New Year too. <laughs> We want uh, to our children just have space uh, for for fun, and uh, that's that's why we need this peace. Just because we are human being and we want to be alive, and um, so that's me. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mila and. Uh,
we really join your your appeal and also we know that you're not victim but, pro but proactively reacting to the situation. In fact, uh, also many of uh, Caritas volunteers both in Ukraine and in neighboring countries uh, are IDPs or refugees who decided beside the, the difficulty to put themselves at the service of the other. Uh, you will find all the information about the figures of Caritas help both in Ukraine and also in the neighboring countries. We have not today the colleagues from Caritas Pol uh, Pol Poland, uh, Moldova, Romania, Czech Republic, Slovakia and uh, uh, Bulgaria, Hungary, you probably forgot someone, but really it uh, was, uh, was a, a huge work and as Mila well said, it was not just providing assistance but uh, taking care of uh, the people, the integral human development. Since the, the, the very first day they provided psychological assistance, uh, uh, protection, uh, uh, spreading information against human trafficking and also uh, when uh, special work with the children, both Caritas Ukraine and Caritas PES uh, are providing in order to, as you said, uh, give the children the rights to be kids. So uh, I would like to know whether there are questions from your side, of course. Mrs. Thomas from Associated Press, may I ask you to come? Here. Yep. Hello, I'm Tricia Thomas with Associated Press. Um, thank you for your very interesting comments. Yesterday we had very strong speeches from President Biden uh, and very strong speech from Vladimir Putin and we're hearing a lot of talk about fighting and winning and arms and leopard tanks and fighter jets. Uh, we're not hearing a lot about um, peace, negotiations, um, and I'm just wondering, what's the perspective of the people on the ground? You talk to people on the ground every day. You're working with people every day. I understand you're united. There's love. There's prayer. Is there a hope? Is peace possible in the near future? All this talk of uh, arms and fighting, but is, is there hope? We start with uh, Father Vyacheslav. Thank you for this question, but really it's, it's not easy question, I mean, because we would like to have hope and when we speak about, about peace, it is, it is really very difficult because we are as a caritas, we are not politics. I mean, we, we, are, we cannot respond for everything, but also, but also we are Ukrainians. Also, we have this experience of war and um, I can tell from, from, from my side, my experience, because uh, peace for me is, is not, not so easy, because I understand that war is a luxury disease of, uh, of society that comes from the, from the past. But I am sure that justice is a medicine, the medicine that can, um, um, can save, can carry uh, ones of our souls. And really, I'm... I'm waiting that time when we can make reflection about this. Uh, uh, Marta said about that uh, stations of the Holy Cross. And really, it is first time when we as a team openly will speak about, uh, about our wounds inside of us, in, inside of our experience, because there are many experiences inside, and we would like to show to our partners, make this reflection, but I am sure I am clear that we need to make this reflection all together, not just as Ukrainians, but also as Russians. And then we can see to each other, to, to the eyes, and we can speak, we can, we, we can try, to, uh, we can try to, to, to build this peace, but it is a long-term uh, process, it's not so easy. Hope, about hope. Yesterday we, we spoke a little bit with Holy Father about hope. We would like to have this hope. It is, it is difficult because when the war is, has short time, few days, yes, then it's much easier to reconstruct. But at this moment it's, it's not so easy. And we as Ukrainians, we are also waiting that signs of the hope. We are waiting our children that are in Russia as uh, prisoners of this war. We are waiting um, 
our people from, from Crimea, from Donbas, Lugansk. We are waiting that time when can we make reflection, where can we cry about our friends that died during this war, when we can start to reconstruct all of that tragedies, all of that stories that we can see in Ukraine. Uh, thank you uh, for the question, and I agree with uh, Father Vyacheslav. And uh, I want to add, uh, I am by professional uh, peace engineer and negotiator, and uh, uh, I can say uh, in my country, use, for, use of force only because we need to protection, you know, ourselves. And uh, uh, the peaceful negotiation uh, can start when the fire will stop. Because how we can to speak, how we, we can to be honest, you know, like century, uh, when the, this fire just continue and continue. Uh, so, uh, uh, of course, we want peace. Of course, we want to the end of this war as soon as possible because uh, it's death. Uh, I know so many people who lost uh, their relatives. I just had months ago explosion in my Dnipro when 46 people died immediately because this rocket attack, attack and 11 people uh, we can't even identify. And uh, we saw this uh, destruction and of course we want peace in my country. But uh, in the same time, uh, uh, if we speak about negotiation, uh, negotiation, this is a partner process, this is dialogue. Mm -hmm. And this dialogue uh, can start when the fire will stop. Thank you. Thank you very much to both of you. Any other question? No? In this case, we... <laughs> Uh, we thank all of you uh, for coming today, also all of you who follow this conference uh, online, mm -hmm. and uh, it's my pleasure to thank Father Vyacheslav Grinievich and Mila Leonova and Mrs. Uh, Marianne Paro Alonso Escobar, and uh, thank you very much. Thank you so much. And please, uh, yes, it's, it's really important that I... It's my pleasure just to share with you these flowers and these candles.